it's Kelly Marie Alvarez here from Lawn Fawn with a video for Simon Says Stamp. Today we are introducing our brand new Magic Picture Changer die. We are also introducing the Magic Picture Changer add-on. This die is so cool. It helps you make an interactive card where one picture changes to the next. It's so easy to put together and the cards are so incredible. This has quickly become my favorite interactive die because it's so cool and it's so simple and easy to use. So in this video we're going to go over how to put it together and then how to make these three different cards. Oh my goodness. You guys are going to love it. I'm already getting so excited to see what you guys make with it. One of the amazing things about the Magic Picture Changer die is that it can work with any stamps that you have. But the other really cool thing is that we made two stamp sets that work really well with it. And that's the Get Well Before and Afters and the Rain or Shine Before and Afters. And these stamp sets will get their own intro videos later on. But I wanted to show you this because it's so cool because they're sized perfectly to work with it. And I'll show you how that works in the video. But you can also use this die with any stamp set, anything in your imagination. And I'll be showing you how to use it with some brand new stamp sets and with some older favorite stamp sets as well. These are all of the dies that come in the Magic Picture Changer. So we have our larger pocket piece, and then we have the smaller moving piece. We also have a decorative frame, and we have a pull tab that works as a stopper as well. The Magic Picture Changer also has an add-on set, and this add-on set is purely decorative. So what it does is it helps you decorate the front of your Magic Picture Changer, and it also has a cute variation on the pull tab, so you have a different style that you can use. And you guys are going to see how we do this in just a little bit. So we're going to start here by showing you the assembly of this Magic Picture Changer, and then we're going to show you how to incorporate stamping and how to get creative with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work with the larger pocket piece. And you'll see here that the die creates three score lines for you. So right now we're going to go ahead and fold along those score lines. So there's one about in the center we're going to fold, and I'm just going to use my bone folder to give it a nice sharp crease. And then there's two on the top and bottom there, and those are nice skinny tabs. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and you're going to be folding those tabs into the back side of the die. I like to start in the middle and then push out like that to help me fold these nice skinny folds. Once I have that fold going, then I'll bring in my bone folder and make sure to crease that really well. So we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to start in the center of that fold, just pressing lightly and then following the crease of that fold all the way to either side. And then I'll take my bone folder and make sure to crease down those edges really, really well. Next, we're going to work with some eighth inch double sided tape. So I'm going to take this nice skinny strong tape and I'm going to be layering four pieces of this tape onto these tabs. So I'm going to layer some on the inside of the tabs. We're going to do that both on the top piece and the bottom piece. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and put tape on the other side of those tabs for a total of four pieces of tape at the end of this. So we're going to flip it over and then add the tape to the top and to the bottom. Now that we have tape on either side of those two tabs, we can go ahead and flip it over so that we're looking at the back side of the die cut again. And we're going to peel up that tape there on the inside of those tabs. So we're going to peel it up on both of them and then we're going to fold those tabs shut. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold along that line that I creased earlier and just put those tabs down. And what we're doing by doing this is we're actually creating a track for our moving piece to move in. It keeps the moving piece from kind of moving all over the place. It keeps it moving nice and in line. Next, I'm going to take out an interactive card's best friend, and that is my powder tool. You can also use one of those powder pouches or even some baby powder with a paintbrush. And I'm going to run that along both of those tab pieces there to remove any excess stickiness that might exist from maybe any extra tape sticking out from the edges. I'm also going to move it all over those tabs and put powder all over the smaller moving piece as well. That's going to help those two pieces move really easily. It's going to reduce the friction and the static that exists. And Oh my goodness, it moves so nice when you put that powder on there. So here you'll see on the main pocket piece that there are four tabs that the die creates for us. Then if you take a look at the moving piece, there are four slots and these are going to correspond to each other. So first we're going to insert that tab into the main pocket piece 
And then we're going to take a look at our piece and we're going to look at that first slot there all the way to the left. And then we're going to look at our first tab there all the way to the left. And we're going to insert that first tab into the first slot. And then we're going to do the next thing. We're going to do the second tab into the second slot. And then the third tab into the third slot and the fourth tab into the fourth slot. And that's how our piece is going to move. Isn't that so cool? I love it so much. So the cool thing about this part is it requires no adhesive. So you can just pop that right back out and try it again. So here you'll see I'm going to insert it into the main piece. And then I'm going to take a look and I'm going to line up my first tab piece into my first slot. So I'm just going to feed that right through almost like we're doing a little basket weave. So we're going to just insert that one just like that. And then we're going to take our second one and put it into the second slot, third one into the third slot, and fourth one into the fourth slot. And that's all you have to do to insert these two pieces so that they move and change. So let's look at that one more time from a further distance. We're going to insert our moving piece and we're going to line up our first tab all the way to the left with the first slot. And we're going to basket weave those through. So we'll move our way through all of the different pieces. Now, once we have this weaved together, we can start to work on the inside part of the die again. So we're gonna flip it upside down here, just like that. And we wanna pay attention to where our moving piece is. You wanna make sure it's between those two tracks and not touching those tracks. So you wanna make sure it's nice and centered and not touching the tracks. And then you can go ahead and peel up that adhesive. So we'll do that both on the top and bottom tabs. And then all you have to do is just shut it closed just like a book, and that's it. That's what's gonna create your whole moving mechanism. So I'm checking one more time to make sure that my piece is in between my two tracks, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just close it shut just like that, and that's it. So isn't that so cool? I love seeing these pieces move. I never get over it, it is so cool. So here you could even add a little bit more of that powder tool. So I'm going to move it and then move it and you'll see that it's going to reduce the friction and really help those two pieces move. So next up we're going to look at the decorative tab die that's included and you'll see that it has a little score line in the center. Now the cool thing about this decorative tab is it's not just decorative, it's actually the stopper for the magic picture changer. So you'll see here we're going to fold it in half, give it a nice crease, and then we can go ahead and add some adhesive on the inside and attach it to our tab piece that moves. So what's great about it is it tells the recipient that there's something to do because it's got that cool little arrow, but it also stops that tab piece from just shooting all the way out back the other end of the die. So you'll see here we're going to line it up and center it right on there. So we're just going to push it right into the crease of that tab and then we can push down and now you'll see when you push it's going to naturally stop it just like that. So it's a stopper so that the piece doesn't come out the other end. So I love that it has two functions. So here is the decorative frame that comes with this die set and there is one little trick to this and I'm going to put some little sharpie lines to show you. This is where the adhesive goes. So it goes corner to corner and the reason for this is if you put any adhesive on the other sides it's going to get in the way of your moving mechanism. So we're just going to take that tape runner and we're going to add it to those four corners corner to corner and then we're going to go ahead and line it up. So you can see right there if you had put adhesive there it would have been in the way of that moving track piece. Piece. So by putting the adhesive in the four corners, it holds that frame in perfect placement and still lets your pieces move behind it. So that's really going to give the frame and make this thing look really, really cool. So next I wanted to show you the Magic Picture Changer add-on. So I've already gone ahead and formed a Magic Picture Changer just like we did before. And here is that other decorative tab slash stopper. So this one says pull, which I think is super, super cute. So I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive on there and just attach that right on. And that's going to work just like the other one that we just tried. Now the other die included in the Magic Picture Changer add-on is a complete decorative front. So we have the frame in the other one and this one actually covers the entire front of the card. So it kind of just depends on what look you're going for. And so we're going to be careful about our adhesive on this one too. We're going to go corner to corner just like the smaller frame and then we're going to put adhesive on the two shorter sides. So I'm just going to take my tape runner there and run it along that. that those little sharpie lines there just as a guide for you guys to be able to see easily on the video. And I'm I'm just going to go corner to corner and then short side and short side. 
Now you'll see that this add-on has that cool little notch there and that's gonna line up with where your pull tab is coming out and it's got the really pretty stitching on it as well. So you can tape that right onto the card and it gives you a really cool look. It still frames your scene but it now gives you this fun kind of decorative edge across the entire panel. Now something really cool is that you can use the frame from the Magic Picture Changer with the add-on. So you can mix and match these depending on what look you're going for. So you can use just the frame or just the add-on or put the frame and the add-on together. So it's really whatever is up to your imagination. So now that we know how to assemble the Magic Picture Changer, it's time to make an actual card with it. So now we're going to incorporate some stamping. So I have the Rain or Shine Before and After stamp set here, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp out those little clouds from the set. And then I'm also going to stamp out some of the raindrops in some Merman ink. So I'm starting to form my scene here. I'm also going to take a light blue marker and just line the outside edge of the little clouds there to kind of help them pop off of my scene. Now since this is kind of a cloudy scene and I'm going to have this turn into a rainbow, I wanted this scene to look a little bit gray. So we're going to do some masking so that we can do some inking. So right here I have some post-its but this has the post-it sticky across the entire post-it and I love to use these for masking. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my clouds on there and then I'm going to cut them out right along the black line. Now one of the cool things about making a mask is that you can save them and use them on a bunch of cards in the future. So once you've cut one mask, you've kind of done all the work that you need to do for a bunch more cards. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim these completely out of my post-it. And then I'm going to layer them over my clouds so that I can ink with some gray ink but still keep my clouds nice and white. So here I have some Distress Oxide Pumice Stone ink and I'm Foam Ink Blending Tool. I'm going to pick up some of that ink. I'll start off of the cardstock and then go on in a circular motion just building up the color. And I'm just going to do one color nice and easy, super quick, just to give it kind of a cool gray sky look. As I start to build up this color, I'm going to take my die out and kind of lay it over and see how it's looking on the scene. I added a little bit more ink to make it a little bit more gray, and now it, I'm ready to remove the mask. And this is my favorite thing. I love doing this. It always feels like kind of like a makeover reveal. Like you peel it off, and eh, you got your clouds. It's so cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that mask and we're going to stick it to the stamp set. And this is what I love to do so that I keep my mask for my next card and it's nice and safe on the stamp set. The Magic Picture Changer was designed with this viewfinder window that helps you view your scene. So you don't need to do any kind of pencil lines or any specific marking. All you need to do is stamp, add some color, and just line up that viewfinder window exactly how you want it to look. So you could put the clouds higher or lower. I like to hold it in place with some post-it note tape, run it through my die cut machine, and now you'll see that I'm going to have that main pocket piece with my beautiful little cloudy sky right on there. So now we're going to repeat the same idea but with the smaller moving piece. So this time we're going to stamp that cute little rainbow because that's going to be our second scene. So we're going to have clouds to rainbow. I'm going to stamp a little smiley face because it's so happy and cute. And then I'm going to use some markers to add some color. We're going to repeat the same idea of creating a mask, but this time we're going to want to create a blue sky. So we're going to stamp on that same post-it note that has the sticky across the whole back of it. And then I'll just use my scissors to cut out along this whole little rainbow sun cloud scene. And then we can take that mask and layer it over our coloring to protect it from the ink. Then all we need to do is take out some ink again. This time we're going to use the Distress Oxide in Tumbled Glass for a nice light blue sky. And we're going to ink that on starting off the edge and just inking towards it just with one color again just to make it nice and simple. Then what we're going to do is take the viewfinder that's in the smaller moving piece, kind of see if we're liking how that's looking. And I think it looks really pretty, just needs a little more darkness, so we're just going to add a little bit of color. And then it's going to be all done and we can reveal the mask for the cool makeover effect here because now we've got our awesome rainbow. So here we're going to look through that viewfinder that the die has. This is what makes it so easy because you can just frame your scene exactly how you want it. And then once it's in the perfect place, you can use some tape to hold it in place and run it through your die cut machine. And we can pop that right out of the die. So now that we've stamped and cut both pieces using the cool viewfinder that is on the dies, we're now ready to assemble it just like we did before at the very beginning with our plain cardstock. So we're going to fold in half right along the center, and then we're going to fold those smaller tabs along the top and the bottom. And then we'll use our bone folder to make sure that those creases are nice and sharp. 
Then we're going to be using some eighth inch double sided tape and we're going to add tape to both sides of both tabs. So the insides of the tabs and then we'll flip it over to the front of the die cut and we're going to add some tape to those two tabs there. So a total of four pieces of tape. Then we're going to flip it over so that we don't see the clouds. We'll peel up that liner tape and we're going to push down those two tabs creating a track. Then we'll use our powder tool to remove any excess stickiness and also put it all over those moving pieces so they move really well in the card. Then we can take our moving piece and insert it into our pocket piece. We're going to look for our first tab all the way to the left and our first slot all the way to the left and we're going to feed that through in our basket weave. And then we'll put the second slot, second tab, third tab, third slot, fourth tab, fourth slot, and there you can see how it's going to start to move. Then we'll open that pocket piece right up and we're going to work on the inside of that piece there. We're going to make sure that our panel there is moving in between those two tracks. Make sure that it's nice and straight just like that. And then we can go ahead and peel up the liner paper on both of those tabs. I'll check one more time that my moving piece is nice and centered and then I can close that just like a book and you'll see how cool that is. Now these pieces are going to move from clouds to rainbow and sunshine. So now it's time to decorate and I'm going to take out my Spiffy Speckle 6x6 pad and I'm going to die cut the Magic Picture Changer add-on from one of those speckled papers. Then I wanted to do a little extra something. I wanted to decorate the tab piece that moves. So I'm going to take out my Spring Fing paper here. I'm going to take out some of this blue kind of polka dotted paper. And I'm going to take that moving piece there, the smaller moving piece, and we're going to line it up just along that bottom edge just like that. And we'll run it through the die cut machine. And here you'll see that we're going to have a piece there just kind of has the bottom half missing because all we need is that tab piece. So I'm just going to trim it off just like this. And this is a great way to add fun color to the moving tab piece. So all you need to do is just add some tape runner there to that piece and just layer that right onto the tab. Now you'll see here that I like to push it a little bit lower just so that there's a little bit of white peeking out of the top of it because that way I know for sure everything is covered that's going to be moving in and out of the card. So you'll see that I just have a tiny little strip of white there and it's going to look perfect once we put our tab piece on there. So I'm going to take that same polka dotted paper but a little pink version there and we're going to die cut the tab that's included in the main die and we're going to fold along that score line and then add some tape runner to that piece. And then we can go ahead and put that right on top just like that. And now that tab piece has this cool decoration to it. So you could either leave it plain or decorate it. I love that you can kind of choose what is going to look best for your card. Next, I'm going to stamp my sentiment there onto my Magic Picture Changer add-on piece. I always like to stamp first before I put it onto the whole mechanism because I find it kind of hard to stamp once it's on there. So I'm going to do my stamping and then add my adhesive. So we're going to go corner to corner. And then we'll also put adhesive on the short sides. And this is to make sure that we don't have adhesive in the way of our moving mechanism. Then we can take this piece and line it up. I always like to look at the little notch and I line the notch up with the tab that's kind of moving in and out of the card. And you can see how pretty that looks now. We're going to create a card base that is four and three eighths by three and a half inches. It's a nice little mini card base that's going to give us a nice little border around our magic picture changer. And then I always like to put my magic picture changers on with foam adhesive. That way it's really easy for the recipient to be able to grab that tab and see the cool interactive element. So we'll glue that right down and then our card is finished. How cool is this? Oh my goodness. It's so fun. It's so awesome. I love playing with these. I just have one on my desk and play with it because it just makes me happy every day. And to send this to someone, it's going to make their day. And that little viewfinder that exists on the die makes it so easy to just stamp and line it up and run it through the die cut machine. So now let's go ahead and try another idea with this. We're going to do a little movement with a stamp set and this die. So on this card, we used a before and after set, which are sized perfectly to work with the Magic Picture Changer. But now we're going to use a new stamp set. It's called Butterfly Kisses. It's one of my favorites. So it's a stamp set that isn't necessarily made to work with the Magic Picture Changer, but it would totally work. So you can use this die with any stamp sets in your stash. Like I'm already thinking of Christmas ideas. There's so many fun things you can do with it. So I went ahead and stamped and colored that cute little fox. And now I'm going to do that same masking technique. So I have that post-it that has the whole post-it stickiness across the entire back and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my fox on that post-it and cut all the way around him and layer it right on top of my colored fox. 
Now I want my fox to be holding this butterfly net. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more stamping over this mask. So you'll see there, I'm just gonna stamp right over his paws so that it looks like he's holding the butterfly net, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and add some color to that butterfly net and then repeat the same thing. We'll stamp that net on the post-it paper and we'll trim that out and layer it right all over that butterfly net there to protect it from our inking. Now here I have some post-it note tape and I've cut out a long piece here and I'm gonna do this to help create a ground and a sky for my fox. So I'm gonna put that post-it note tape right over the fox kind of protecting the whole sky area and I'm gonna take out some freshly cut grass ink to create a cool little grassy bottom for this fox. So I've got a foam ink blending tool and once again, I'm just gonna blend that ink right on nice and easy. Nothing complicated, just one color, just blending that right on just like that. Now once I have that color looking exactly how I want it, I can peel up my mask and then I'm just gonna flip that mask right over and cover up my grass area. Then we'll take some minty fresh ink, it's one of my favorites for skies, and we're gonna blend it on just in that same way. Right over that fox since he's protected there by the post-it note mask, and then right up to that post-it note piece that is protecting our grass. And now it's time for the big reveal. So we're gonna peel up that mask over the grass, and then we'll peel up the mask on both the fox and the butterfly net. And we're gonna make sure to save these as well. I'm just gonna stick them right onto my stamp set so they're ready for next time. And you can see how cute that fox looks. So now we can go ahead and use this little viewfinder window. So I wanna stamp a butterfly, and he's gonna be catching the butterfly in the next scene, but I'm using this viewfinder as a guide as to where I need to stamp. So I just kinda of layer that right over, and now I can add my cute little butterfly and just color right over that sky. I thought that'd be easier than creating a mask for something so tiny. So now, once again, we're gonna use the special viewfinder on the Magic Picture Changer die to perfectly frame our scene, hold it in place with some low tack tape just like that, and then run it through the die cut machine. Now, I love ink blending and masking, but if you don't, you can do stamping and color your sky in with markers or colored pencil or watercolor. So you don't even have to do all of this masking. You could even just use your markers really quick, which is really awesome too. So here you can see I'm gonna repeat the same thing because I want my fox in my scene again. So I've stamped and colored him, and now I can use that mask that I've already cut to cover him right up. But now what I want is I want his little butterfly net to change because I want him to actually catch the butterfly. So right here you can see that I'm gonna use my little viewfinder on the moving piece kind of as a guide to help me know where to stamp. Once I stamp the net, I can go ahead and add some color with my markers, and then I'm gonna take that butterfly and stamp it in the net because now he's caught the butterfly, which is so cute. So we've got the butterfly in the net, and then I'll just add a little bit of color to that butterfly with my pink marker. And then I can take that mask I cut earlier and protect my butterfly net by layering that right on top. Now the cool thing about reusing my same mask is it has a guide as exactly where my grass should be because you can see where the inking went on the mask. So I'm just gonna take my post-it note tape there and line it right up with the inking onto the mask and that's gonna make it so that my grass is in the perfect placement so that it matches the other one from before. So I love that you don't even have to think about it. The mask just does the thinking for you. Then we can go ahead and peel up that tape that's protecting the sky, and then we can layer it over the grass and do our inking onto our sky, just like before. Then we can go ahead and peel up all of those masks so we'll reveal our grass, and then the fox and the butterfly net. Then we can take the smaller moving piece die and use that viewfinder to line it right up just like that. So you'll see I'm just gonna line up the grass so it's nice and straight, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now my moving piece will be all cut and ready to assemble. And so now we'll repeat the same assembly process. So we'll go ahead and fold right in the center just like that, and then we're gonna fold along those two tabs along the top and the bottom, creasing them nicely with the bone folder. Then we'll take out some eighth inch nice strong tape, and we're gonna layer that both on the inside of the tabs and the outside of the tabs for a total of four pieces of tape. Then we can flip our die cut over and we'll peel up that liner paper on both the tabs securing those down. Those will be a nice track for our moving piece. And then we'll use the powder tool to remove any excess stickiness and any extra friction or static amongst those two moving parts. 
then we can take our pieces and feed them through. So we're gonna feed through our moving piece into our pocket, and then we're gonna look for the very first slot and the very first tab, so all the way onto the left side, and we're gonna feed the first tab into the first slot and then repeat it all the way down. And now you'll see that our piece is gonna be moving. So we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna make sure that our moving piece is right in the center between those two tracks. And then we can peel up the liner paper on both the top and the bottom and close down our pocket just like a book. Now it's time to decorate. So we're gonna take that little tab there and we're gonna add some adhesive to the center and we're gonna sandwich that right onto our moving piece just like that. That's gonna be our awesome natural stopper and then we can start to work to decorate. So we're gonna take the add-on for the Magic Picture Changer die, and we're gonna die cut that from some Spiffy Speckles paper, and then we can go ahead and add our adhesive. So we're gonna go corner to corner on all four corners, and then we'll add some adhesive to the two shorter sides. Then we can layer that right onto the Magic Picture Changer. So this time we're going to layer the Magic Picture Changer add-on with the original frame that's in the die. So it looks really cute like this, but when you add this frame on, oh my goodness, it looks amazing. It really just makes it pop. So I love layering the two types of frames. We're gonna create a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter, and we're gonna add some more of that Spiffy Speckles paper right onto there. And then I'm gonna add some foam squares to the back of the Magic Picture Changer and layer that right onto my card base. Next, I've die cut some fancy wavy banners there. We've got the stitched one and then a smaller one to layer inside, and we're gonna stamp fluttering by to say hi. And I'm also gonna stamp a tiny little heart that comes from the extra special Easter set because I just thought it looked really sweet. So I'm gonna stamp that tiny little heart on there, and then we can start to layer. So we're gonna add some foam squares to that smaller banner and then layer it onto the stitched banner, which is such a cute look. And then we'll start to layer some fun decorative pieces. So on the first card, we created a really simple look. And now now what we're going to do is I've stamped and die cut some pieces from the stamp set and we're going to layer it around the scene. So it's kind of stepping it up so you can keep it more simple or you can add more pieces on there and kind of help decorate and bring that whole scene to both the inside and the outside of your magic picture changer. And now here you can see it in action. I love the movement that's created with him catching the butterfly. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. I can already start thinking about all of these fun things that I wanna do with all of my other stamp sets. These are so fun to create and I just can't get over how adorable this is. It would definitely make someone's day. Now we've been doing some fun things with pictures changing, but another cool way to use this die is to use it with words. So you could either have an image to words or words to words. So that's what we're gonna be doing today with some of my oldie but goodie favorite stamp sets of Birdie Told Me and Riley's ABC. So first we're gonna be doing some partial inking here. So I'm just gonna stamp just the bottom little piece of my word bubble into my ink pad. Nothing fancy here, you can just kinda eyeball it. And we're gonna stamp that right onto the paper. Then I went ahead and spelled out a custom sentiment with Riley's ABCs, and we're gonna stamp that right above that speech bubble. Then all we have to do is take our magic picture changer die, and we're gonna line up that viewfinder. So here I can kind of see how I want it to be centered. You could either have the speech bubble lower or higher. You can kind of play around with it until you like it, and then hold it in place with some low-tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now your first piece is already done. To customize this a little bit more, I'm just gonna take a black pen and just extend the lines of that speech bubble so they go from end to end of the magic picture changer. So I'm just completely eyeballing it here, just using my marker just like that, nice and easy. And now we're gonna do the same type of idea. So we're just gonna ink it up, just kind of guessing. If you don't get it quite enough, you can just use your black pen just like that, nice and simple. And we're just gonna stamp it, and then we'll stamp our words right above. And then we can use the viewfinder on the smaller moving piece to line up. Now this one's pretty cool because this one worked out perfect where I'm not gonna have to take out the black pen. So just like that, we're gonna line it up and run it through the die cut machine. Now this time to add a little color and to make it a little bit simpler so we don't have to do any masking, we're gonna do the idea with the markers. So it's kind of just what you're feeling. You can create your background with markers or pencils or you can do some masking and some inking. So in this case, I wanted it to be nice and simple. So I've just got my markers out and I found that BG70 and BG10 are a really close match to our watercolor wishes paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just layer those two markers on together. I'm just gonna scribble them right on and it's gonna look great. So 
we'll just scribble that right underneath the speech bubble. That way the speech bubble stays white and the part below it kind of matches the sky that we're gonna have as our background. And now it's time to assemble. So we're gonna fold along the score lines that the die creates for us, adding tape to both of the tabs on the outside and inside, and then taping those tabs down into the inside and using our powder tool to remove any excess stickiness. We'll feed our piece in and then basket weave our tabs into the slots. Then we can peel up that liner paper and close it down like a book and our magic picture changer is formed. Now we've been using that little stopper tab by using the die cut portion, but you can actually use the other end and use our push here stamp set. So I'm gonna stamp the pull here for the push here stamp set right onto my tab. And then I can add that tab on just like I did before, but now that little arrow is just gonna be on the other side. And then now we can start to decorate. So I've gone ahead and cut the Magic Picture Changer Adam from some Watercolor Wishes paper, and we're gonna layer that right on top. And then we cut another one out of some green spiffy speckles paper and we're gonna die cut that with the grass from the mushroom border die. And so that's gonna be a nice little grass layer for the bottom that's gonna have some beautiful stitching that matches. We've die cut an outside in stitched rectangle out of some spiffy speckles paper and we're gonna layer that onto a standard size card base of five and a half by four and a quarter and then add some foam squares to the back of our magic picture changer and layer that right onto the card base. So I went ahead and stamped out some critters from Extra Special Easter and also from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. And so you'll see just how cute this is. And now we're gonna layer these onto the card. And so we're gonna be creating a scene around the words that are changing in the Magic Picture Changer. So it's a really fun way to use this. This card is a recreation of a card by Elise. So thank you so much, Elise. And Elise had the really cute idea to have this be jokes. So I think it'd be really cute with little knock-knock jokes written in there. Oh my goodness, it would be adorable. I also use this for a gift certificate from my brother. So I said a gift for you and then when you pulled it, it said scavenger hunt since I got him tickets to go to a scavenger hunt. So you can get really creative with this and come up with some cool stuff. I can't wait to see what you guys do. So there I'm gonna layer on my cute little chickies and then finish out the scene with some butterflies and some clouds. And I love how the speech bubble changes position so each bunny is saying one of the things. Oh my goodness, it's just so cute and sweet. I had so much fun making this card. So here it is in action. How fun is that? And it was so easy to stamp and color because we didn't even have to do any masking. It was just stamping and a little quick scribbling with a marker. I absolutely love it. This magic picture changer is so fun. It's so easy to assemble and the stamping is so super easy with that viewfinder that is in the different dies. So you can do cool stuff from picture to picture to movement by having something move like the fox catching the butterfly or from picture to words or words to words. There are so many cool ideas. And here we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. Elena's card is way too cute. When you pull, he has the little glasses in the nose. Oh my goodness, I adore this card. And then this card by Megan is amazing. She uses the get well before and afters, and now the turtle is just gonna flip right over onto his feet and be a happy little turtle. Here, this card by Shari is so sweet. We've got the little sick whale, and then he's gonna get better, which is just such a cute way to cheer somebody up. Here we have a gorgeous card by Melissa, and I love when you pull, the little volcano is a part of her scene and the volcano spouts all of the lava. I love it, it's so clever. Here Lynette did the picture to image idea, so she's got her cute little unicorn and then her sentiment when you pull. Here is the card by Elise that inspired me to make mine today. I love this idea so much and I can't wait to try it with a cute little knock-knock joke. This card by Kay is so cute. I love that you have the little bunny and then when you pull, you have the adorable little scene and the rest of the sentiment. This card by Nicole is incredible. You've got the fortune cookie opening up. I love the idea of this change. It's so clever and cute. This card by Audrey is pure sunshine. I absolutely love it. And when you pull, you have this great sentiment. Megan got super creative and she has a little bandage on the goat and the sorry you're feeling bad, which is so funny. And then when you pull it, he's all healed, which is so adorable. And then this card here with the taco, and when you pull, the taco's gone. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love how creative you can get with this die. And then this card here is the card by Jen that inspired me to make the one today. So I cannot wait to see what you guys do with this die. It is so much fun to use, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.